In the future timeline of Dragon Ball Z, there was one child that watched the entire world burn. Future Trunks watched the entire world burn and watched as every single person around him died. And the one that broke the camel's back truly was Gohan. Trunks would find the dead body of the one who has taught him so much, the one who would eventually push him over the brink into the Super Saiyan he now is. We know the story of Future Trunks. We know what happens when he travels back to the past to save the Z Fighters, to save Goku, and eventually we know that he gets his retribution. He gets his redemption. His redemption for every single person that was dead in the future timeline. He would eventually be able to defeat not only Android 17, but also 18, and on top of that, would even be able to defeat the bio-android we know as Cell. Future Trunks was strong. Strong enough to truly protect those who were in need, and truly strong enough to protect those who he loved. Now, with that said, Future Trunks would be eventually approached by two people. Two people he knew nothing about, and two people that he would eventually know as Supreme Kai and Kabito Kai. These two that were in front of him were telling him that he was the secret and he was going to be the reason why they would be able to defeat or even stop the revival of Majin Buu. Majin Buu is a deadly threat and he, that being, once controlled by Bobbity, could conquer and destroy the entire universe. A universe that they sought to protect. The first thing that came through Trunks' mind would be, well, where were they when he needed them? Where were they when his planet was overruled by androids, by a bio-android? Where were they when Vegeta, Goku, and everyone else, every last Z fighter, died? When they all died protecting Earth, when they all died protecting the planet that they have now come to to ask for help. Now, the first response would obviously be that they don't in interfere in mortal affairs, and Trunks doesn't like that answer very much, but he would tell them that if this affects not only his mother, but everyone else on planet Earth, then Trunks will go with them, train with them, and do what they say specifically. And this would lead future Trunks to arriving on the world of the Kais, a place that no normal being could ever get to, a place that Trunks would be in that he shouldn't be in, because this world is made for gods. This world is for overseers that many will never see in multiple lifetimes, and Trunks stepped foot on the grass that they step on as well. Trunks would begin with one and one thing only, and that is the acquisition of the Z-Sword. He must pull the sword out of a giant rock, and eventually, once he's able to do so, he will train with it, learn how to utilize it, and eventually, he will slay the monsters that come. The monsters that are threatening the entirety of the universe, well, hopefully, they don't have to take on Majin Buu, but if they do, this will be the key to stopping them. But what they don't understand is that this Z-Sword isn't what they believe it to be. The Z-Sword is not perfect. It is not something that is fully and utterly foolproof. And they would eventually find this out when future Trunks would be finally in peak condition to utilize the sword, but he would tell them that he should stress test the sword as much as possible, leading him to slashing at a giant block of Kachin. Once slicing at it, he could feel the sword strike into it, but eventually it would bend, bend, and then snap. The sword would break in two, and everybody would begin to panic. Their chance at defeating Deborah, Bobbity, and even an awakened Majin Buu has now been stripped away. Their chance at winning, 
their chance at keeping the universe safe, it's gone. They would begin to freak out, but eventually, a nice elderly voice could be heard from behind them. He, they hear and turn around. As they look, Elder Kai explains who he is and where he came from, saying he came from that broken sword over there, and he appreciates them letting him out. They would all be shocked. How? Why? How did he even get in that sword? And eventually he would explain that the one and only Lord Beerus put him in that sword. He actually doesn't like Lord Beerus very much, but that's not neither here nor there at this moment. He would explain to them that they actually shouldn't worry about Majin Buu, and that the person right there, the one with blue hair, is just enough, actually more than enough, to defeat not only Majin Buu, but easily defeat Deborah and Babidi before they even awaken Majin Buu. Everyone is shocked by this. No, he's not. Shin would immediately reply, saying that he appreciates the Elder's wisdom, but Trunks isn't strong enough. Not even close, not yet at least. They needed the Z-Sword, but Elder Kai says that the Z-Sword, that was a myth, a myth made up by Lord Beerus to more or less keep him within that sword and to not worry that he personally can make Trunks strong enough to take down someone like Majin Buu. He tells Trunks to sit down and he's going to have to wait a while, a long while, probably about two days before this is over. But he is going to unlock the dormant potential of a half Saiyan, half Earthling. He begins to dance around Trunks, and it's no dance you would ever do at any party. You would absolutely get made fun of, that's for sure. But Trunks would sit there patiently, trying not to twitch, trying not to move. And eventually, Elder Kai would dance around him for two days straight. And eventually, his power would be awakened. Trunks would question, This doesn't feel any different. I'm not any stronger. What were you supposed to do? In which Elder Kai would respond that he should stand up and take a couple steps back. Maybe even a giant leap back. Because he wants him to focus his energy and transform into what they know as a Super Saiyan. And he tells him to go right ahead. Do just that. And that's exactly what he does. He begins transforming into a Super Saiyan. Ascending beyond, but the aura, the aura is not golden, the aura is not that beautiful yellow, it is white. They're confused. Why is it white? Why is it clear? But then they realize his power is leaps and bounds compared to what it was just two days prior. Trunks would look at the Kais and tell them that he's ready that he's ready to kill Deborah and Bobbity. They would teleport over to planet Earth and they would eventually defeat both Deborah and Bobbity very swiftly. Trunks would even defeat both of them before Shin and Kabito could even get hurt or even be killed. Trunks saving them both from a, well, death and he would easily kill the two that are threatening the peace on earth that they have at this moment. Deborah and Bobbity now dead. Now they take, well, Boo's egg. Boo's egg will be taken away and brought eventually in front of Beerus. But Supreme Kai says that they need someone like Trunks. They need someone like him to help with the Kais, to maybe even be a Kai, and that he could do so much, so much more than he could possibly imagine. Trunks initially would reject, but Supreme Kai says that he can learn how to teleport, use the Kai Kai, and still visit his mother and everyone he enjoys to be around as often as he would like. Trunks would eventually agree. He would go with the Kais, Elder Kai, Supreme Kai, Kabito, all of them. And when they would all head out and they would all be on the world of the Kais, well, training would ensue like normal. Everything seems to be normal, peaceful in fact. 
The world of the Kais is so elegant. Boring, in fact. But it's still elegant. The world of the Kais is a peaceful place for trunks to train, learn, and just grow massively. And throughout this time, he would gain power uncomprehensible. Trunks' ability to grow in strength is insane, and his, well, training partners, quote-unquote, people that can teach him techniques, it would allow him to grow so, so much. With his potential unlocked, his mystic form, Trunks' power would continue to soar. But eventually, eventually, someone would appear. Trunks could hear someone out there feel no sense deep down inside he can tell who this is the power feels so familiar but at the same time it's not the power feels kind of odd as if it's potent very potent as if he can't get a grasp or a read on it but at the same time it gives off a signature of someone someone he once knew a teleporting figure would eventually arrive in front of Trunks, Supreme Kai, Elder Kai, and Kabito. And then once that person would appear, Trunks would understand why he feels the way he does. The person in front of him is Goku. But no, this is no normal Goku. This is Goku Black. Goku Black would go blow to blow with Trunks. And quickly, Trunks would be able to actually gain the upper hand. He would ramp his power up as much as possible. And when doing this, he realizes that he actually can finish the fight. And with the help of the Kais, Elder Kai, and everyone else, he knows a good little bit of magic, good, a good amount of techniques. And on top of that, he knows that he must, must kill if necessary. Just like Debora and Babidi. Just like what happened before Majin Buu. So that Majin Buu wouldn't be revived. He knows he must not hesitate against Goku. Because this is not the same Son Goku that helped him so much. The same Son Goku that he watched fight against Cell. He is not the same. This is someone else. And eventually, Shin would recognize him. Recognize that this is Zamasu's key. It's ramped up, more potent, even stronger. But it is him. He can tell. And Trunks would immediately realize that this is a Kai. A Kai that is supposed to be helping and protecting the universe. And this would give him the drive to kill, kill Goku Black. With his mystic form, Trunks would slice through him with his sword, a ramped up version of the sword he once used, slicing and dicing and giving him the Mecha Frieza treatment, obliterating his body just in case anybody wanted to somehow revive or heal him. After obliterating it, he would eventually sense someone else. And, well, Kabito would also sense this person too. Zamasu would begin closing the distance on the location or last location of Goku Black, and he would begin brawling with Trunks very, very quickly. But soon, there would be a realization that Goku Black is dead, and Trunks would begin to slash down Zamasu just as much as he did Goku Black, but this is way easier. I mean, Zamasu's weak, very weak. But then soon he would realize Zamasu is a mortal, unable to be killed. And as they continue to brawl, continue to fight, well, Zamasu would sneak by, somehow slip away, and he would end the life of Supreme Kai. He knew that he couldn't kill Trunks. He was too strong. Too strong for Goku Black, too strong for Zamasu. So if he got his hands on Shin, just Shin, and kill them, he could come out later and come up with a plan. Maybe leave for a little bit and then come back. Maybe, maybe, or maybe he could get stronger. Or he could just wear out Trunks because eventually 
he will die. Because, well, at the end of the day, Zamasu is immortal. Trunks would clash with Zamasu over and over, even after Supreme Kai's death, and Trunks would try to cut through him and more or less slow him down, slow down his regeneration, maybe even whittle his key down as much as possible. But eventually, Kabito and Elder Kai would come up with a plan. They would teleport away, and eventually, they would arrive at a place that we know very, very well. Planet Namek. While Trunks clashes with Zamasu, they both don't even realize that they are gone. That Kabito and also, well, Elder Kai are gone. These two people are gone and they have no idea. And Trunks continues to fight and eventually Zamasu would realize this. Wait, where's the old one and the red one? And soon he would realize what they're doing. They would first try to get rid of the immortality, but somehow it wouldn't work. Maybe the dragon that they utilized was just so much stronger than the one they have on Namek. But even with that said, they do decide on something else. Supreme Kai would appear alive once again, and Zamasu would realize what's happening, trying, trying to kill Supreme Kai once again, but nope, not going to happen. He would teleport out of there, and he'd be gone. But Zamasu would be confused. That was no Kai Kai. There's no way he could have Kai Kai'd that fast. I mean, he didn't even know he was going to be alive again that quickly. No, it's a wish. Two wishes. And they still have one more. But they won't need it. And the reason for that is because someone is coming. A blast through the sky. A blast from a planet blinding light coming from the sky of the, the world of the Kais and coming crashing on down. Immediately, you can see one person standing and then someone else with big ears, someone else with purple skin and what looks to be a feline, maybe even a cat, would appear from behind who we know as Whis. Zamasu would quake in fear, and Beerus would charge at him, trying to akai him out of existence, but it wouldn't work. Immortality is truly immortality, and he would regenerate back, even from the Hakai, which would shock Beerus. Hmm, very interesting. I didn't think you would die if you were immortal, but that's fine. Beerus would then yawn. He would yawn at Zamasu as he grabs a sword and smacks it on Zamasu's head without, he, without him even reacting quick enough. Zamasu tries to even leave, but Beerus is so fast, so quick, that nothing can stop him. He would get sucked into the sword, and he would be put there. He would tell Whis to put that sword into his staff and never let the sword out, ever. So that's what Whis does, putting the staff or putting the sword into the staff, and Beerus would then look toward Trunks. You did good, kid. You did good, and I heard you're pretty impressive, at least from what I've seen. Beerus, before, well, Shin could even get back, would tell Trunks that he's now going to take him as a disciple, as someone he's going to train, and eventually a rival. He tells the kid that he's far along, very far along. So, there's nothing else for the Kais to teach him. Trunks would eventually nod. I mean, he knows who this person is. Lord Beerus, God of Destruction, Destroyer of All. He should listen. He shouldn't go against anything he says. But eventually, maybe they'll come close enough that he'll be able to Kai Kai and go visit his family from time to time. But from here on out, Trunks goes to live on Beerus' planet to a certain extent, and Trunks goes to Beerus' planet, the world of the God of Destruction, to train himself to become the rival of Lord Beerus. Now what happens next in this new timeline? Well, I'm not sure. Maybe Beerus would eventually 
see Trunks as the next God of Destruction. Maybe Beerus decides to allow Trunks to become a Kai. So they have Beerus as the God of Destruction and Trunks as the Supreme Kai right next to him. Maybe everyone gets erased because Zeno believes that that universe, the Future Timelines universe, isn't good enough, isn't strong enough, and the mortal level is too low. With that said, let me know what you think in the comment section below. What timeline or what differences in this timeline do you think would happen if Future Trunks broke the Z-Sword? With all that said, I hope y'all enjoyed, and I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.